welcome back to Charging Forward. Today is Monday, October 16th. My name is Yasmin. And I am Adan. And we will be your anchors for this episode. So let's not wait anymore and let's get this thing started. Over to you, Yasmin. Thanks, Yasmin. What? What is going on? We are just doing the weekly update. Wait, what? Never mind. Okay, on to the weekly updates. This Wednesday will be a minimum day. Please remind your families that school will get out early on Wednesday. This Friday is Spirit Day. For Spirit Day this Friday, dress like a twin. Cool, who are you going to twin with? I'm going to twin with me. I don't think it works like that. Okay, I'll figure it out. Speaking of Spirit Day, we do, do we have our spirit winners? I believe we do. Ah, yes. The trophies are back. Congrats to Room 9 for being our lower grade winners. And congrats to Room 17 for being our upper grade winners. Way to show that Charger spirit. We can't wait to see who wins this week. Now let's check out who has a birthday this week. Roll those birthdays. something to do with this. A light bulb? Yeah, who knows. Well, maybe Juan can shed a light on the situation. What is so funny? You know, shed a light, like a light bulb? Oh, never mind. Okay, over to Juan with the highlight of this episode. And I hope I can enlighten you on, on what is special about what you are having. Light bulbs and lights may take something that may take us for granted. We, sim we simply walk in a room and turn on a switch and boom, let there be light. But it wasn't always that day that way. Today we use special light bulbs such as LEDs or fluorescent lights. But one of the OG light bulbs is called an indecent light bulb, an indecent bulb. An indecent bulb works as uh, heating up a tiny filament. When the filament is heated, it also produces light. Many attributes of the invention of the light bulb Thomas Edison, but in, real had a, in reality, multiple scientists and engineers had been working on the light bulb around the same time. What made Thomas Edison consider the father of light bulb was that he felt the patent for improvement in the electricity light. He filled his patient patent on October 14th, 1875. It actually took him many more months before he was able to make a patent and a, a better bulb design. In actuality, the first ever electric light was invented in 1802 by Harvey Davy. No matter what, the electric lights soon started to take over. Now we have many types of electric lights, including the ones used by this light to show. To show. Could we imagine a world without electric lights? Well, we can always go, could turn off the lights and imagine what it would be like. Hey all, welcome back to the Charger Sports Report. Last week, trials for cheerleading and basketball were held. 
It was amazing seeing so many third, fourth, and fifth graders try out. We know everyone did an amazing job. Yup, and we know the coaches have a tough job of trying to pick who will make each team. That is right, but no matter what happens, everyone did a great job. Let's check out a recap of the tryouts activities. Robot footage. to all the students that tried out for cheer and basketball. Yeah, we can't wait to see who makes the teams. Now let's check out some weather. Over to Malia with our Charger weather report. Hello and welcome to, to your Charger weather forecast. This week, let's start out with some with some windy cooler temps. It, it will still be warm in the temps in the mid 70s. Later in the week, it should warm up, but the wind will die down as well. The sun should be prepared, should be out every day at some point, but prepared for, for seeing clouds in the sky. Overall in the morning should be cooler. So dress in layers as you will get warmer during the day. Enjoy your, your weekend hours, your weather forecast. This past Friday, our PTA put on our first movie night of the year. This PTA movie night showed the movie Encanto. Let's take a look at some pictures from that fun movie night. lot of fun. Remember that supporting our PTA on these special nights also supports our school. 
I definitely look forward to the next PTA event. Hey party people, it's time to rumble, or maybe battle. Well, battle of the books that is. We are calling all third, fourth, and fifth grade students. Rio Plaza will be, be competing in the Ventura County Battle of the Books. Battle of the Books pits students from different schools against each other. Students answer trivia questions about many different books they have read. What books, you may ask? Well, I can help you with that. And to help out as well, we are working on getting all the books in the library for you to borrow and read. All you have to do is read as many of the books on the list as you can before the Battle of the Books in April. More info on the tryouts for the battle team will be shared later in the year. And before I go, we are still waiting for our first reader review. So if you want to be on Charging Forward, read a book and record a review. Remember, if your review is featured in an episode, you can get a exclusive Charging Forward sticker. Okay, now let's check out the book that we can read for Battle of the Books. I want to be in the battle of the books. Me too. We better start reading. I'm going to go read right now. No, I am. Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's Teacher Tech Tip. Now last week, we took a look at some safety on the internet, safety on the computer. This week we're going to talk about how do you trust the information on the internet? You see, a lot of you are using computers, and as such, you're going to have to do research. And it's so easy to Google something, or trust TikTok, or trust Twitter, and trust that the information is totally true. Well, not always. So is everything on the internet we read real? Well, yes and no. There's a lot of good information on the internet that is real, but there's a lot out there that is not. But the question is, how can you find out what is real? Now, a lot of you probably have heard of Wikipedia as a great website where you can just find information or we could just Google the answer. But believe it or not, there's a lot of websites out there that people put non-real or fake information or information that might be twisting the truth. For example, have you ever heard of the Dihydrogen Monoxide Research Division? Believe it or not, you've dealt with dihydrogen monoxide all the time. You might have even used it this morning. You might have used it to brush your teeth. You might have used it to take a shower. Because what is dihydrogen monoxide? It's H2O, it's water. How about, would you love to go live on an island with dogs? Do you know there's an island with limitless space and tons of dogs that are running free every everywhere? Well, there really isn't. But you see, anyone can make a website. 
anyone can put information out there. For example, I bet you haven't heard of the Pacific Northwest tree octopus. Now this octopus lives in a very specific part of the Pacific Northwest and it's one of the only octopus or octopi that actually lives in trees. Now there's been a few sightings, some of them recent, some of them older, <clears throat> but believe it or not, they're out there. I'm just kidding. This website is totally fake. Everything about this is made up. As you see, everything on the internet can be made up or can be real. On Wikipedia, it has a lot of good information, but the problem is anyone can edit it. Now there's a very good backbone to Wikipedia where they actually work their way through and try to figure out and stop things. But how do you always know a website is the best information? Well, some of the most reliable websites are gonna end in .edu or .gov. You see, .edu is educational sites, colleges, schools, and such. .gov is government. They have very strict restrictions on what they can do and what they can put out there. .com, anyone can get. And there's a bunch of other dot endings, like .org, .net. So you gotta really take a, an idea of what's going on. So when you're looking at information on the internet, Googling things, go by the rule of three. If you can find the same information in three different locations, then it's probably true. And by this same information, we don't mean the information that keeps linking back to the first article, but actually finding common information across three very different websites. Remember, not everything on the internet is true and everything that's put on the internet stays there forever. So be careful what you put on the internet, but also remember, be careful of what you read on the internet. If you're not sure, check in with an adult. They can help you and help you understand what's true and what's not true on the internet. That's a big part of being a computer savvy internet safety person. So as you do research, think about what is real and what is not. That's this week's Teacher Tech Tip. Hey, Yasmin, the camera is on. Can't stop reading. Must finish books. Yeah, but it isn't the battle of the book until April. Yeah, and? Well, I'm just saying we have some time. True. Maybe we take one we take it one book at a time. Yeah, that is a much better plan than what I had. And what was that? We had all the books at once. Yeah, maybe not a great idea. Plus if we have them all, what about everyone else? What about them? They need to read them as well. Fine, we can share. Good. How about while we end this so we can back get back to reading? Great idea. Bye. Bye. Bye.